My favorite part about upgrading the Jeep Wrangler is being able to take a space that's unutilized and make it functional. In this video, we're gonna be checking out the Vector Off-Road full-length e-dock, and I'm gonna be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get it installed. So I'm gonna grab the part, you guys click that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. So this, in front of me here is the Vector Off-Road full-length e-dock for the JL and Gladiator models. This is an awesome way to utilize the space on the dash and turn it into a functional space where you can mount all of your accessories like your phone, GPS, or anything that you want access to while you're driving. So the e-dock costs $169 and it comes with all of the mounting hardware that you're gonna need. You don't need to make any modifications and this is a pretty simple installation that you could do DIY at home with some basic hand tools. The e-dock is something that I've been running on the JK Build for years and I absolutely love it. It's definitely something I would recommend and that's why I'm gonna leave all the links in the description so if you're interested, you can go and check it out. So enough talking, let's grab our tools and dive right in. So check it out guys, I just folded down the windshield, which is not a step in this installation, but I wanted to do it for three reasons. One, I've never done it before and it's super cool and easy on the JL. Two, I wanted to catch some epic shots of this installation for you guys so you guys can follow right along. And three, I wanted to use the world's smallest Jeep branded ratchet. If you also want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I remove the windshield, comment down below. The first step to get your e-dog installed is to remove the rubber lining inside the cubby. Next, you want to remove the two Phillips head screws inside the cubby. Using a trim removal tool, you want to remove the two plastic trim pieces on top of the dash. These plastic trims are slightly hard to remove. You want to use a trim removal tool or a flathead screwdriver. You just want to be careful you don't damage the dash. And you want to put these pieces back in, in case you wanted to put your dash back together. So. It is a bit pretty big piece and you just want to pry it out gently and if you work all the corners it will eventually pop out. The next step is to screw in these center brackets back into the cubby using the factory hardware. Make a note of the orientation of these brackets. They're going to be pointing inwards and that's how the center of the dock is going to mount. Next you want to get your standoff post and your set screw and you want to screw it into the bottom until it stops. Next you want to use a 10 millimeter and remove the bolt that's in the bottom underneath the dash of the cap that we moved in the second step. Now you can get your standoff post from the previous step and you can screw it into the hole where we just removed the bolt from the dash. To make sure it's tight, you could use a number four Allen key and just tighten the top of the screw. There you go. When you're tightening this down, be careful not to over tighten it because this Allen key will strip very easily and you wanna back this out so that you can put the dock on top of it once you're done. Now we wanna repeat the same process on the passenger side, but it's slightly different because there is a spacer that we have to install. On the passenger side, this spacer needs to be installed. Make a note that the fat side of the spacer needs to be facing the hood, and you wanna place it down directly over the hole. Once the spacer is in place, all you need to do is screw in the standoff through the spacer and into the factory hole. The next step is to test fit the E-Dock, and you wanna make sure you get the orientation right. You wanna get the center holes in front, and you want to sit it right on top of the standoff posts. The next step is to reinstall the screw and the washer on the top of the standoff to secure the e-dock in place. Be sure not to drop it into the hole. So the next step is to screw in the two center holes. You can see that it's square and you also get this bolt that has a square on the back of the head. So you're going to line this up. It's a little bit tight. But once you get it in place, it'll go directly in, and then we can put the nut onto the back. Using an 11 millimeter open end wrench, you can now tighten this down. Now 
after you snugged up all the bolts, what you want to do is slide in these end caps. They're pretty tight, but they do fit on both ends. And then you could add your accessories. So check it out guys, this is the E-Dog fully installed with all of the 67 design accessories. I will link them below, they are the best accessories that complement the E-Dog and they allow you to mount all type of accessories onto the E-Dog like I mentioned earlier. I have a phone mount, a GoPro mount, and then there's, a, there's an additional mount over there which can be for a phone or GPS, anything you want that you need access to while you're driving. This is out of the way, hands free, and it's ideal for off-roading or overlanding. So there you have it guys, that's the full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get the Vector Off-Road E-Dog installed on the Gladiator or JL. This is definitely a must-have item on my Jeep build. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up rating, it really helps the channel grow. And please consider clicking that subscribe button because my brother and I put a tremendous amount of effort into making these videos happen for you guys and we really appreciate your support. There's a lot more exciting stuff coming for the JL build including a lift, a wrap, tires and a roof. So be sure to stay tuned and click that notification bell so that you get notified every time a new video is posted. As always, I'm AdventureDex. Don't forget, keep on jeeping.